Today's video is the number one most requested subject that I've had all year. So today we are finally going to talk about tab dividers. And specifically, I am talking about tab dividers for physical planners that you can touch and feel that have tabs inside of them. I'm not referring to digital planners or to downloadable PDFs. Those are totally out of scope for today's video. I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous, and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday, and I do unboxings on Saturday. Now today is part one of a three-part series that is only available inside of Planner Academy. So today, just to be clear, is just a freebie excerpt lesson from Planner Academy, just so you can see what we talk about inside of there. And also I did want to give all of you an overview about tab dividers in case that's something you are interested in. Now, if you are in Planner Academy, the next set of videos will be design videos. So I'll actually walk you through how to create your own tab dividers inside of Adobe InDesign. And I will also be doing a third video on how to work with your printer or how to maybe make these at home on your own. And of course, I have provided templates. So if you're like, heck with it, Lisa, just give me the template that I can send to the printer. I have those available for you as well. Now, if you are not in Planner Academy and you are interested, the time that this video goes live, Planner Academy is open for enrollment through this Sunday. Planner Academy is open through Sunday, April 21st. And then after that, it's going to close for possibly a the year. I really want to launch, I usually open it up in the fall. However, this fall, I really want to launch incredible workbooks and profitable PDFs. And realistically, because that is a new course, I don't know if I'm going to have time to launch both that and reopen Planner Academy to do it well. So I might push Planner Academy off and not open it up again for a year, but I'm not sure. So I don't wanna make any promises. Um, but today, let's go ahead. Today's just meant to be an overview on tab dividers. So we're all talking the same language when we start going into the design lesson and when we start talking about how to work with printers. And especially with the templates, you're going to have to know what I'm talking about because the templates do have different directions and there are different templates for different styles of tab dividers. So we're going to go over seven big areas today. The, the first one is which planners can and can't have them. So first of all, any planner can have them like across the board, it doesn't even matter. But if you have a spiral bound planner, 99.9% .9 of people are going to expect tab dividers. They're going to be very disappointed if you have a spiral bound planner without them. It's just kind of uh, something that is part of the package, right? Versus if you have a bound planner that's more like a book, people aren't expecting that and it might be a little odd, Plus they are probably getting this because they like the sleek edge. They like the fact that it looks like a book and to make it a little more high end, you might just gild the pages with gold or silver or rose gold or something else to make it a little more premium looking. Now, that is not to say you cannot put tab dividers in here, but just remember because these are bound, it does affect the binding. So it's going to be very difficult for you to find someone who will want to bind uh, tab divider, like full page divider pages. Um, and it's kind of going to add a lot of bulk and it's going to make it so the book doesn't open up and lay flat. Uh, so, you know, again, I think all around just a bad idea to put divider pages or tab dividers inside of the bound ones. Now, the second thing is innies versus outies. So just like belly buttons, uh, you can have tab dividers like this where they stick out. These are outies. Or you can have something like power sheets where they are innies. And that just means when I have the cover shut closed that no tab dividers stick out. They all kind of stay inside. I think this is a little bit more high end looking. Plus it helps the tab dividers live a little longer, especially people that throw them in their purse. Uh, it's not a foolproof, you know, safety thing, but it definitely helps with longevity, if, especially if you have an annual planner. And it, once you get into the middle or the end of the year, they start getting frayed and people are kind of like, oh, I guess I bought a cheap planner. They can't put the correlation together that they did it to themselves by throwing it in their purse and just having it laying around. So something else to think about. Um, now, where to put tab dividers? So. I see a lot of newbies making this mistake. Your tab divider, if you have a two page monthly spread, I don't even know if you can see it, it's so bright. 100% the tab divider goes on the left 
side. Never goes on the right. Don't even argue with me. That's just how it is. When people open a a uh, planner and they grab the tab, they immediately flip it to the left. Nobody in the history of time has ever grabbed a tab divider and said, let me push the pages off and I'll hold on to the tab divider and then lay it back flat. That just doesn't happen. So remember, if you have a two page monthly spread, the tab divider is always on the left. Just in general, whatever you do, you're doing, the tab dividers, these Mylar dividers are always on the left side period. Um, you can put a quote over here, but you still always put the tab divider on the left. Uh, the other thing on where to put them in terms of text direction is if the spiral is down here at the bottom and you're holding the planner, 100% you should be able to read the letters this way. They shouldn't be upside down. They should be, the letters should be uh, this way. So I can read July, August, September, October, and more importantly, uh, they should also look exactly the same on the back side. Because remember, when you open up that two page spread, I can look at the back of the tab divider and I should be able to see the same text there that is on the other side. I have only seen, where is it? So newbies are the only ones who usually make this mistake is this is the My Brilliant Writing Planner. And I think this woman just made these at home. Um, she has nothing on the back. It's just plain. Um, so that is, again, just sort of a newbie mistake, something to be aware of. You should put text on the front and the back. They're meant to be double sided. Uh, the other thing is size and font considerations. So smaller is better. And the problem is with these tab dividers, because you're trying to fit so much in there, like this tab divider from Dayspring says June 2019, because it's a mid-year planner. So they were trying to distinguish between 2017 versus 2018 or 2019 or whatever this is. So that alone takes up so much text and people want to fill up the whole space from the left side to the right side. That's a huge no-no. So instead, uh, you know, cultivate what matters, the power sheets, if you have those and check those out. They do an excellent job of having very small texts and font. In fact, it's so small, sometimes it's difficult to read. Um, but it looks very high end and it looks nice. And the second thing is you always want to use a sans serif font. So again, a newbie mistake is to use a serif font or like this, again, this I'll use this planner. Um, they're using a slab font. Uh, it just looks huge and cartoonish and it just looks, it just overall makes it look a little lower quality. Now, the other thing too, with the size of your fonts and the placement, so I'm going back a little bit to number three, is where to put them is sometimes they overlap. So a really good example of someone who did a great job with this is Bloom Planners. Sorry, I have so many planners over here. Um, Bloom Planners did a great job where their tab dividers are, first of all, they have very small text. It's sans serif. And so they have a big, huge thing of text or of a tab, but only maybe one half of it is being used up with the actual text. So that when these lay flat, these all kind of overlap with each other. Always a much nicer look. The cheaper look, I shouldn't say the cheaper, but to me, I, I really dislike this look personally, is this big one like the My Brilliant Planner has where they're huge, uh, they, they have gaps in between them and they don't overlap. So I really, really uh, strongly dislike that. And it looks a little cheaper. Uh, same thing over here. The other thing you can do is what Power Sheets did is these are all kind of flush. So they're almost right next to each other. So while they don't overlap, um, there is a slight tiny, tiny uh, bit of overlap, but it's minuscule so that they kind of look like they're all separate. So that I think is again, a better way to do tab dividers. The other thing is the material. So that's a different one. So the material, let me take this one. Uh, you can have two types of tab dividers. So the Bloom planners have Mylar tabs, which means that they have printed their planner, all the pages are exactly the same size, and then what they've done is they basically just said, you know what, let's go back and just stick little stickers on there. That is a Mylar tab, it's basically just a sticker, and if you look really closely, it has um, just a clear sticker overlay on top of it, so it's not even, it's not part of the page, so these tab dividers are thicker than the actual page they're attached to to give them a little more sturdiness and make them a little more hardy, but they are just simply 
taped onto there versus a full page divider, which is what Power Sheets uses. Um, and they have a sticker on top, but that's only because your hands are greasy and people are turning these every time every time, all the time during the day. And that just helps it with its longevity. The Plum Planners, they also use a full page tab divider. So what does that mean when you have a full page tab divider? That means this tab divider page was huge and they used a machine, either a Cricut, a Silhouette, or a production machine of some sort, and they cut the pages out so that only the tab divider remained. Um, so again, something to think about when you do your design. You have to know right away if you're going to have Mylar tabs or if you are going to use full page dividers because the printer will need to do that separately. And you also need to make sure you're working with a printer that is able to do that because not all printers will create tab dividers. In fact, I would say tab dividers is probably something that printers despise and wish that nobody would ever do. So again, something to think about. Um, the last and final thing is the side step planner. So the bound start planner, and a lot of people do this, not just them, um, from, from start planner, it has the side step. So what does that mean? It means that over here, they look like a step. I don't know if you can see this, I'll put a picture up. Um, and so each month steps to a different page and every page before that has that same style. It has that like little cut in it. So this is the only exception. The tabs are on the right because of the style of the side step. And then you flip the page over and you have your left and right two page monthly spread. And these tabs, same thing they have that sticker on the sticker overlay on top of them. Again, people's fingers have so much oil on them, they'll ruin it. Plus it helps the longevity of the tab dividers. So this specifically, if you're in Planner Academy, there is a vendor specific just for the start planner that is able to do the side step. So check out my video on printers and using the printers in China specifically. Um, I actually found the printer that does the printers or does the planners for start planners. So if you like this particular style, they can do it. There are other planner uh, production companies that will do sidestep as well, but just in case you wanted that exact same one. So that is it for today's overview. So just to recap really quickly, we talked about which planners can and can't have them. Spiral can, usually with bound planners, you don't unless you have that sidestep that we just looked at. Innies versus, versus outies just means whether or not the tab dividers are going to stick out from the cover. And the third is where to put them. And we talked about the right correct and the incorrect placement for those and how closely and far apart they should be spaced. The fourth thing is text direction and the text direction. Remember, if the spiral is on the bottom, you should always 100% be able to read from left to right on both sides, the actual name of whatever, if it's the month or quarter or whatever you have printed on there for text. And the fifth one is the size and font considerations. Smaller is always better. Leave a lot of white space. Taking up the entire space from left to right is kind of an amateur move. It looks tacky and more importantly, Always use sans serif font, don't use slab, don't use serif, don't try to use script. Uh, no one's going to be able to read it. It's just going to look weird. Um, and then number six for material, basically you have a choice between either using all of the pages, just having these all printed as is, and then having Mylar tabs added after the fact, or you can go ahead and have a full page tab divider, but remember you will need some sort of machine, a Cricut, a Silhouette, or a print production facility that can cut those out for you. And the last one is the sidestep printing, um, or the sidestep tabs, which are typically only in a bound planner. You don't have to have them, uh, but you know, obviously if you're going to use these, the font, the margins on the left and the right outside edges of your pages has to be pretty generous um, the whole way down because you don't know whether or not, the beginning ones have a full page usually, but as you go down in the months, you're going to run out of space because you're cutting those off. So read these inside of Adobe InDesign and to get the templates, those are all available for you inside of Planner Academy. And if you're in the course, they will be inside of there by this time next Thursday. All right, I hope to see all of you in Planner Academy. And if not, I still hope this was helpful and you're all having a fabulous day. And I will see you on Saturday for an unboxing. All right, bye.